What's up, everybody? Welcome in Jump to Start Racing Podcast. My name is Wellington. I'm here with two of my closest friends. Yancy, say hello. Hi. <laughs> Always talking crap. Huh? <laughs> Ruben, what's going on? Ah, <laughs> uh, man. On this episode today, we'll be discussing the Qatar Grand Prix at Los Isle International uh, Circuit. We'll also be discussing some news with uh, regards to penalties, penalty reviews, a new driver for Alfa Romeo, replacing my boy. Uh, but before we get there, Ruben, how was your weekend? It was, it was pretty good. Can't complain. Saw some racing on a, on Sunday. Obviously by myself because you guys didn't want to go to the bar, and um, and then I was with you guys for you know, for me as a, baptism. He's blaming us for not going to the bar. Yeah, we had to go somewhere. Yeah. Okay. My bad. Yes. Yeah, how are you doing? I'm like Tony the Tiger. Great. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Yep. It was a good weekend, man. We got a, a um, the race wasn't that great, but it was a few surprises we got. And uh, obviously, we spent time with family and friends. It's always a good weekend, man. Obviously. Yeah. All right. So let's jump right into this. A little bit of news before the race weekend. Alfa Romeo chief. Dr. Vassour, no, he's not a doctor, but uh, Vassour. Uh, That's a doctor's like, name. Yeah. <laughs> sounds like a doctor. It sounds like a doctor. But uh, Guan Yu Zhou is the confirmed second driver at uh, Alfa Romeo, replacing my guy, the Bergamo Bullet, Antonio Giovinazzi. Don't laugh, man. Uh, my boy, I feel sad. Now it all makes sense. Now it all makes sense. What? Why were you so down this weekend? Th- that's exactly the right. The Bergamo Bullet. The Bergamo Bullet is gone. It's gone. Despite him being... Great, <laughs> just not getting the results. He, he was good during the races. Not great. Fall back. Great. <coughs> any um, any thoughts? Guan Yu Zhou. It happens. Former Renault driver. You know, I Top guess two. um, Renault uh, Development Academy. It seems that Alfa Romeo is definitely leaning into uh, changing things up and a new, you know, creating a new era. I guess in their team. Uh, they obviously brought in a new team leader with uh, Valtteri Bottas. <coughs> they want to bring in a young gun, uh, obviously thinking about the future, because the future obviously is going to be a little bit more stable now with the new uh, financial regulations for teams. Um, so, yeah, I think that that's what it is. I mean, uh, Huang Yu Zhou is actually doing really good. He's a front runner. He's in second place in F2 right now. One really uh, so won two races already. Uh, it just needed a change, I think. Uh, you know, and then he comes with a lot of sponsorships too, from China. So, and I think that's there were accusations the out there that he's uh, just another paid driver. I don't know if I agree with that. He's been very talented, and like you just said, he's running yeah. second in F two. Yeah, I mean, uh, I mean, it, it's tough, right? Because obviously, any good driver is going to come with sponsorships, and some more than others. Um, but also we have seen the case. Uh, we've seen it with Lance Stroll. And we've seen it with uh, Sergey Sorokin, former Williams driver. Um, the money does play a part. Nicholas uh, Latifi. Nicholas Latifi. Mazepin. 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 Yeah, all these guys. Money plays a part, and and um, money's the icing on the cake. Motorsport in general is sponsor driven. Of if course, you don't have the money to sponsor a team. You're not, you know, you're not going to be racing. So that it's just, uh, it's the, you know, it's the devil that you know. Yeah, I mean, since the beginning of the sport, it's been a sport for rich people. So it's like, yeah, whatever. No, and then also, you know, racing is not a very profitable endeavor, <laughs> to say the least. Yeah. You know, you'll get money with from the, you know, constructors champion and stuff like that. But as far as, like, you having your own racing team. Which I think the new regulation, the new financial regulations are meant to, you know, make it a little bit more profitable over time and make uh, the value, make give it more, make these teams more value. Um, I think that's the, the, the direction the sport is headed up. But if it keeps on this way, it's just going to be sponsor based. And you're not technically going to have the best drivers driving. You're going to have a lot of paid drivers. I mean, we, we saw that with... Um, but I don't think that... Juan Yu Zhou, could he be? Yeah, I mean, but he's also very talented, and we've seen it. We saw that, I think, 
semi clear in the Drive to Survive series when they were talking about when Haas needed the money and then the the sponsor they had, they wanted a German driver. They specifically sp- spoke about that a little bit when one on one. Yeah. So and here's Mick Schumacher. Yep. Schumacher, you know, he's opened up for Schumacher and also Massive to to come in. So let's give this kid a shot. You know, he's definitely bringing money behind him. He's not coming with his hands empty. Yeah. No, <laughs> and he has a, and he's, he's bringing a super license with him, yeah, not fabricated. And he has a like clear has track record been. of being a successful racer. I mean, Lance Stroll was successful too in the lower categories as well. So, but if you are, if you were any country, and you have a successful driver, mm-hmm. wouldn't you want you know people from there are going to back him? That's what you need. Like you know, look at Checo Paris. He's been in F one for a long time, and most of the companies he has are Mexican based companies. companies. Yeah. So, it's always going to be that way. I think it's the name of the game. That's the way it goes. It is what it is. All right. So something from last week that was still holding. The attention of the drivers, the uh, the stewards, and all of us fans was the Max Verstappen move on Lewis Hamilton to essentially push him off track while Hamilton was Hamilton was trying to overtake at uh, Turn One in Brazil. So Mercedes presented what what was deemed as new a new and substantial evidence, which was the forward facing Max Verstappen footage as well as the 360 view showing uh, what happened between the two drivers. Why are you laughing at me? No, it's just how, how crazy it is that these guys are bringing, you know, hey, obviously the, the decision was made without looking at that, and now, hey, we got this new proof that could show otherwise. Like, and uh, why like what he's saying, 360 yeah. view from... Yeah. Every car has a camera. Yeah, yeah a bunch of cameras, not one, yeah. a bunch. Why is it that they, the stewards don't have that? Right away. Right away. Doesn't make any sense. But the replays do. I mean, that that day during the race, no, no, no they never showed a replay on that. Doesn't on make that any angle. Sense. And it's and it's like that's like the the essential shot, like the one where you can see the input of the steering wheel, what the driver is doing, and make a decision on it yeah. without seeing. It just that, doesn't that make one. any sense. And they've had that footage for other penalties when they've given them out. Why? Is Yo, imagine the NFL. Like it took days to get like the right angles and stuff to make a call. Like, come on. Like, I just don't understand why we can't make this work. But the it doesn't make any so sense. And so every le- every major sports league, has, at least here in the U.S., has gone to a replay model. So is F1 going to start calling New York? <laughs> they <laughs> they <laughs> should. <laughs> Just like uh, the NHL. Yeah, to um, verify the shot. <laughs> so the FIA, despite those new uh, camera angles, they rejected the Mercedes request to, I guess, to open up the review based on the fact that it did not really provide, even though it was new evidence, those two camera angles or those camera angles, it wasn't enough difference to really yeah. have the ruling overturned. And you're right. It's like calling New York or from the NHL. Like, okay, th- it's just if not. There's, as the, if there's irrefutable evidence, right. you can't turn, overturn the call. That's basically what it is. Once the call on the field is made. Yeah, yeah, exactly. So there was a couple of ramifications. Obviously, there's no penalty to Verstappen, no penalty to Red Bull. But then what ends up happening is that, like, for example, Norris got a penalty in Austria for Which a very similar move with Sergio Perez. I'm going to use this term. I'm going to use it very carefully. It wasn't as intentional between Norris and Perez, let's say. Please direct, heart racing, you could call it? Please direct all hate mail to Yancey. <laughs> <laughs> no, you're saying you could call it heart racing? With hard, hard racing. Hard racing. It wasn't Elbows as out. intentional. It wasn't as intentional. How there are, are different degrees of intentionality. See, how are you able to judge that? <laughs> no, I, got, I, got, I got what it was. They were both defending us lions. <laughs> <laughs> there you go. <laughs> you know what? <laughs> oh, man. Uh, you beat me to the punch on now. I wasn't gonna say it now. Gotcha. No, <laughs> but no, yeah, but it, I think it fitted now. <laughs> but it is fitting. <laughs> but to the point you were trying to make, I think we've been very critical, pretty much this season and last season as well yeah, of our the whole stewards. Existence. Yeah. Because we could get no clarification. It's they have, they have like you could say they have a set of rules, but there's like a bended line. Like the, it's so flexible the line. You could go super right, <laughs> super left. Yeah. So it's like it doesn't make any sense to me. No, it doesn't. Like I, I think, you know, I think Max is a penalty there. I sh- it should have been right on the on the spot, if they want to look at on the angles. But look at all the controversy it's going to cause. 
because Leclerc came out right away and saying, hey, so I'm going to change my driving style. Exactly. Well, that's exactly what happened. What everybody's going to start doing. And Norris said the same that, thing. Like, yo, my penalty isn't happened. fair. It's what happened to Leclerc in Austria when, when he was leading the yeah. race. And Max overtook him and run him off the track. The next race, when they battled again, I think which was a Silverstone after that, he had his elbows out, and he lit in that and didn't let Max through. He changed his driving style. So he's like, all right, so what the drivers are going to do, they're going to be like, okay, so this is how you're going to be calling it now? So we'll change our driving style. And then this is going to happen again, and this is a result of not having clear-cut rules as to what you can and cannot do. Because the driver, the drivers are going to take every inch of it. Meaning it's the same thing with track limits. Meaning a straight if you, line. If you, don't, if you don't start deleting lap times, the drivers are going to be go, going out as far as they could. But this is what they want to know. They want to know as, well, how far can I go? What is the limit? Because every driver has to it's be on the limit. So what is the limit? So I don't get penalized. And the FI, it's frustrating. Because at every race, there's a different set of stewards. And if yeah. what they need to do is that they need to standardize this. This is something like just that they're yeah. standardizing everything else. Yeah. They can't have different stewards because they're not, or at least have a group of stewards where they can all confer. And this is how we're going to call every race. And you can, you can, uh, all in New York. you can deploy different stewards. Like they have different referees, but at least it's one, it's one union. But this is ridiculous. Yeah. So I, I agree, agree on Because then we don't know what the hell's going on. Right. I think that there should be, the stewards at the race need to control their own, you know, the race itself. So, like, the black flags, the green flags, the yellow flags, all that in-race stuff needs to be by, I'll call it the home team of umpires, right? Mm -hmm. Everything else that, for example, you don't get penalties called, like, in the NFL where it's right away, right? Or, like, a whistleblowing in the, N in the NBA. There are times where it's, like, full laps, full days, like, even a week where penalties aren't called. Those calls should go to a central FIA uh, consortium, in right? France or even in in, uh, in in the UK. In the UK, yeah. Or the the stewards also like you know every, everything you, you mentioned they should do, and they should also suggest, hey, we noticed this being dirty, throw it out to these guys so they could review it. Exactly. You know? well, Just like yeah. they're saying like a penalty, you know, they're being on the investigation, so pretty much some, some something like that. Things need to be standardized, man. This is ridiculous. I, I've never seen. Any major, I mean, we have controversies with the refs in basketball and in football or American football. Um, but it's just that all the arguments are based on, like, obviously a human error, and then you have replay to back it up. This is the most technologically advanced sport in the world. There's cameras everywhere, and it's not, you have 360 cams, you have slow motion cams. You can literally, they have sensors for everything. How can you not come up with an answer right away? It's just, how can you be the most technologically advanced sport in the world and have trouble with this? It doesn't make any sense. It just doesn't make any sense. And then we're up in the air and we're getting mad. My heart rate is going up right now. <laughs> come down. Yes. Sorry. No, look, like I said, I think that calling what I'll call the, the balls and strikes of the day-to-day -day that in the race stuff right because at least the umpire you know the strike zone is going to be consistent throughout the game but then there are things like i'm going to use again the, the uh, baseball term uh who was there first between like the the, the runner or the ball mm -hmm. stuff like that that stuff that needs to be scrutinized a little more can go to a central consortium uh -huh. of decision makers right i don't know that's no yeah, i think that's the best way to do it you know i don't know I mean, every sport has done it, so I mean, yeah. baseball went to that. Hockey was actually the first sport to do that. Yeah, yeah. yeah. They have, they have. Was it is in in Toronto? I think they have their main thing. Mm. They have their main office. I don't know. So um, whatever. So there was no ramifications to. Uh, man, and plus, it's just. It will make, be. It's just gonna make the last two races even crazier because for sure Max is gonna drive even harder. There now that he's up against it. Uh, you know, spoiler alert. Well, Max hasn't changed his driving style. Uh, that's one thing. It's just, he's always been like that. He's super aggressive, especially at starts. Super aggressive at defending. <laughs> super aggressive at overtaking. That's Max's like driving style. Like a lion. Style. There you go. Yeah. That's, that's his, like, uh, the Dutch. That's, that is Max's driving style. And this is, But a lot of people take note of it when they're up against Max Verstappen on track. Just the way Lewis's backs off all the time. 
Seb is the same way, even though I think uh, Max uh, got under Sebastian Vettel's skin every once in a while, especially when he was with Ferrari. But, uh, but yeah, I mean, I, the drivers know that Max is aggressive, and there's nothing wrong with that. But when it comes, when it comes to policing the type of overtakes and things like that, obviously he deserves a penalty. I just think that what it looks like to me, I, I wish I had a tinfoil hat, it just looks like to me the stewards had didn't want anything <laughs> to mess with the title fight, and, and I agree. Let it be. I agree. They should, to me, they should just always, unless it's dangerous, just always let them race because yeah. that that's that way we get the purest form of the sport, the purest form from each driver, and then you'll get like the different driving styles showing up, like Hamilton just kind of backing out, preserving his title fight versus like a Max who. Yeah, but what, then what, what happens? Bumper? See, here's the issue with that. When what happens if that overtake is later on in the race when you don't have time to make another overtake, like, like what happened in Brazil, and it was clear that Max run him, ran him off the road. But there was there was time to make another overtake. Yeah, I mean, but it. that but that's the whole point. Is like if this happens again and there's no time, who should be the the winner? <laughs> this is this is why these things have to be decided on. And it has to be clear. Because if it if, th- if this happened what tw- uh, what uh, ten laps to go in the race, yeah. all right he had time. But what happens if it's like the, the last two laps or two or the last lap? Yeah. yeah, man. Oh, when you say that, like it like it makes me nervous for the next two races. Oh, you should be. Will the track be finished? It looks like it. it looks nice too. Will the track at Jeddah? Jeddah night. Jeddah night. Nice. Yeah. We ready? Let's go, gentlemen. A short view back to the past. 30 years ago, Nikki Lana said, Ah, I can't do it. <laughs> I'm going like to get it. I'm like, I'm going to get it. I'm going to get it. I his eyes closed. I thought he was going to do it. <laughs> I'm looking, I, at, I his, I'm looking at his computer. I'm looking at his computer to see if he's cheating. No. <laughs> I got two more shots left at this. Two more. And then I'm done. I got to hit it. Weekend race review. Well, let's start with this one. Lewis Hamilton, special rainbow livery helmet. He used it uh, this past week in Qatar. He's going to be using it in Saudi Arabia and also in Abu Dhabi. Three countries, obviously, not the greatest as far as uh, human rights go. What are you guys' thoughts? Aside from the helmet being beautiful, what are you guys' thoughts? Ruben? No, I think that uh, it's... it's it's tough because you know when when he's out there he represents a lot of brands and a lot of this the companies they always want to remain neutral to any to everything mm. regardless of but as they go to to every to all these countries and you know they try to make a maybe like like a little bit of awareness but they're only there for a week but showing awareness to so many people in the world is hoping to you know to develop some kind of change and are they the right people to do it well, they're not political. I mean, they're making a political statement, but they're not really politicians. They just come into this country for a week. They notice this certain thing. That's fine. It's perfect. You know, and, and but they're they're making a, you know a statement about it, and I like it. But mm-hmm. the, the country still has to listen. Well, I mean, uh, it's what we discussed before. Yes, it's only a week, mm-hmm. but during that week, the eyes of the world are on that country, and any human rights violation that mm, they may be in. Violation of, I should say, um, but it does bring awareness, and he's and he's he, uh, just like Sebastian Vettel has, he's brought awareness where, and in this particular case, is where uh, gay marriage is illegal, or is it being, or even being gay is illegal, um, which is horrendous, um, especially in the times that we live in. You know, kind of, kind of evolve, um, but. It does bring awareness. I'm, I'm surprised that he's able to, to do it. But obviously, his status in the sport is cemented. He's the greatest driver in the world. Anybody would want to have Lewis Hamilton driving in their country. Um, but it's like it's like we said before. Obviously, you go to these countries. Obviously, they're giving the money. They're holding the event. Um, however, um, yes, they have questionable history as far as human rights or you know, any issue that you want to uptake, bring awareness to that, and maybe that'll lead to change if you're an athlete. Well, we've seen that happen before, and 
and it happened, it, you know, it's happening now. And I applaud Lewis for doing it. And the helmet is absolutely Fire. beautiful, man. Yeah. Beautiful helmet. What's your point on it? No, I just wish that he had been doing it as long as uh, Sebastian Vettel has. Uh, Sebastian Vettel wore a rainbow flag on his helmet at Hungary, I believe, which was a long time ago, mm -hmm. right? So this is the this is the however you cut it, however you slice it. This is the top dog in the sport, the most visible man in the sport. The he is an athlete that transcends Formula One at this point. He is involved in so many different. Uh, avenues of uh, entertainment he was in cars he went to the met gala etc he's in fashion i just really wish he would have done it uh earlier like i don't think we even saw an article as to oh my god sebastian vettel has a, a rainbow no. right and now we're seeing an article oh lewis hamilton is wearing this so it's like it just goes he's to the show biggest name of the sport that, yeah it just goes to show like and maybe he just didn't have that idea maybe he got it from vettel and maybe he was saving it for these countries. Yeah, that are happy. Maybe. You know, we don't something know what the thought process, the the thought process is. And obviously, just like we get ideas from each other, you know, closest friends. Cl um, <laughs> 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 we get ideas from each other to do things. They, he, they, the drivers bounce ideas off each other. And and I know that, you know, Seb and Lewis seem to have a good friendship, uh, even though they were rivals before. But um. But yeah, man. I mean, maybe he just thought of the idea, and I remember there is a time where you have to design it and get it manufactured and stuff like that. And maybe he was saving it for this race. I wouldn't go as far as criticizing him for doing it now than not before, because obviously Lewis, since especially since last year, has been involved in so many different issues. Uh, you know, uh, pr police brutality, racism. Now he's taking up the LGBTQ plus cause i mean he's every and then uh, what he did at the met gala was amazing too where he brought design unknown designers uh and gave them a platform to show their designs at one of the biggest fashion events in the world so uh hamilton commission like he's doing it all so i am not going to criticize him for doing it before yeah uh Beto doesn't stop them no no he does not better the other day when they were doing uh the before the race driver on that they do, and they do like an in, a little interview on top of the track. Yeah. The lady asked him, "Hey, do you want to say a few few words in German?" He's like, uh, "I don't think so many German people in the crowd, but I'll say something. Please pick up, pick up for yourself. Don't let you know. Don't litter. Blah blah blah." <laughs> <laughs> I'm serious. Yeah. Clean your room. <laughs> wow. <laughs> he continues to be the mayor, right? Yeah. Jeez. No, but I, you know what? I'm glad it's. Even weird to me to see them still do the kneeling before the race. Mm -hmm. Yeah, they're still doing it, which is yeah, they are young. Yeah. yeah, but you know, I'm glad that just keep pushing these things forward. That's that's all that needs to really keep happening. All right, so the results of qualifying: Hamilton pole position, Max second, Bottas third, Gasly fourth, Alonso fifth. That's how they finished. That's how they actually finished. Unfortunately, Max Verstappen and Valtteri Bottas had picked up penalties for speeding through a double waved yellow to the point where they actually set faster laps than uh, th th those were the fastest laps. At least Max Verstappen's was. Uh, we had talked a couple of weeks ago about how uh, they were going to start to introduce this double waved yellow and how the penalties would be harsher mm -hmm. for them. And here are. I don't. This is not even the first time, but here is a direct result of exactly that and this is something that could have it didn't could have affected the world drivers championship standings with max having gotten a five place grid penalty what are you guys are what are you guys thoughts as far as the enforcement and as far as the safety aspect which is obviously paramount to mm -hmm. everything yeah i mean there there cannot be any blurred lines in this? Blurred lines. <laughs> they it just they can't be. I mean, if there's a double wave yellow, that means something's on. You know, something's off. Or somebody's gone off on the track, mm -hmm. and the cars need to slow down in that sector in order for n another atrocity not to happen. I mean, I saw uh, there was a there was a race in Macau 
this yes. weekend where they had a huge pileup. And we had cars. In the same part of Macau always happens. I don't know why. Yeah. <laughs> but it's just like you would see like cars, even even after the initial incident, you would see cars just going by and they're just running into him, piling up on each other. And the race was already red flag and the yeah. cars were still flying. And luckily it was like rally cars or something like that. Mm -hmm. it, wasn't, it wasn't open it car. Wasn't open, it wasn't an open wheel. But, I mean, that's, yeah. Something like that happening is just a the recipe for disaster. That's why you can't have any. That that has to be clear cut and dry. With double wave yellows, you slow down, even if you're going for a qualifying lap. And if it messes up, that's the risk that you take. It is what it is, man. It's racing. So, this we can show that by the way, like there were not, there was no if about of you know there was nothing about it. You you did it. You committed the crime. You're paying. Absolutely. And remember these cars. It's just like they have all these cameras. They also have a ton of technology that shows right away when there's a yellow flag coming up or a double mm -hmm. yellow, or, you know, safety car. Everything, they get it on the dash right away as well. So, yeah, I understand you want to put a fastest lap, but there's already a yellow flag there. You can, you're can, you not going to make it because you have to slow down. Just slow the car down and you won't get penalized. And if you slow down, you don't get penalized. You start second. But you if you don't want to take that risk, yeah. do what Mercedes did this week with Hamilton. In Q2, they went out early, set a, a good lap just to do like a safe lap, and they were... A banker lap. Actually. Yeah, like a banker lap, but actually taking us a super serious lap because Hamilton did both, and they were, you know, awesome laps that they were able to, mm -hmm. to get him forward. So, don't or or don't wait. Do the banker lap and do another lap, you know, a little quicker. Don't wait to the last minute, but there's no other chance to do another lap because that's pretty much what's been happening in qualifying for a while. And and sure. incidents on that on that last minute lap that we're doing matters. It happened this weekend because you know they went through a yellow flag. So yeah, I mean, at the end of the day, you get penalized because, I mean, he he was penalized, obviously, but you're and justifiable. You're yeah, but you're making the the your situation worse, especially if you're fighting for the drivers' chance. Exactly. I mean, look what happens. All right, if you slow down, you start second because that's where he was anyway. Mm -hmm. He still wasn't gonna be fast enough. I mean, obviously, the Mercedes were way quicker this weekend over the Red Bull for sure. Uh, you can see that in qualifying and the race. But at least you have and a practice. fighting, yeah. No, and the, but at least you have a fighting chance to go into turn one and at, at least take the lead. And we know if you can take the lead, you have a, a very serious advantage and not burning up your tires as much. And you have an aerodynamic uh, advantage because you don't, you're not in dirty air. Give yourself a chance. Didn't give, especially on the weekend when you know you're not the quickest car, and he didn't do it. Right. So, I'd rather be second than sixth. Or seventh, whatever. Absolutely, wherever, yeah. because the, also when you're starting back, when you're starting further back on the grid, you're running the chance of somebody running into you at turn one, debris flying everywhere. Yeah. We've seen it all the time. We love to see the first lap because of that, because we don't know what the hell's gonna happen. But if you're a driver, you're trying to play it safe, and uh, yeah, you're not playing it safe there if you if you if you're getting p penalties you that are pushing you to. And you worked for Max this weekend too, the first lap. Yeah, B barely uh, because. As you said, you put yourself in danger. He almost crashed with Alonso right yeah. in the in the right after the turn one. Crazy. I don't know. Anything else to talk about? Um, really, the only I think that's probably the only thing that you can really criticize Max so far this year. He's been pretty good all the the whole year, anyway. So, yeah, Christian Horner came out and was like, "Oh, it's it's a rogue uh, rogue marshal waving the flags to <laughs> screw up." It's like, dude, what are you doing? So he has to pay. Uh, Michael Massey a visit now he's gonna have to do like community service and like just uh, he's gotta attend pass like, the broom in the track steward class yeah, yeah. <laughs> fold, fold the fold the flags <laughs> you gotta you gotta chill out with that because obviously you, oh he did right away <laughs> no he had to but it's just like why are you critic these people are volunteers and obviously they need a voluntary they need volunteers to marshal so why are you criticizing people that are actually helping you out um. And it, and obviously they didn't do anything wrong because he was doing what he was his supposed job. to do. He was doing his job, and just because you're you're salty about, you know, your driver getting a penalty, you want to start lashing out at everybody. Like, calm down, dude. It it seems like the pressure is kind of getting to. Yeah, him. it woke up the lion, right? Yeah, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. So, onto the race itself. Nothing else to mention about qualifying, right? No. Onto the race itself. That Lewis was a half a second in front of everybody else. Yeah. <laughs> what was it that happened to Gasly? And he didn't even and he didn't even have the engine that he had in Brazil. Yeah. What was it's that happened to Gasly to cause that yellow flag, that double yellow flag? He had a puncher. That's what it was. Uh, 
I don't recall. I know that it was. I know it was a ghastly incident. I know that. Yeah. It was a puncture. It, it was, was a puncture. Okay. It was a puncture. Yeah. It was. I, I think what well, he hit his his front wing, hit one of the cur- the infamous curbs now mm-hmm. because that those curbs were causing might as well be punctures spikes. everywhere. Yeah. Um. So his front wing hit one of the curbs, destroyed the front wing, and then yeah. obviously the front wing uh, punctured his. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. But those curbs, they were destroying front wings. They were destroying Everything. chassis. As Charlie Claire had to change his chassis. Correct, yeah. The correct chassis. Yeah, it was insane. It was another car, too, with a correct chassis this weekend. Possibly. I don't remember. I think it was a Williams. I remember it was. I think it was a, a, It could be. could have been, yeah. But so. It was yeah, the killer curve. It, this track was very reminiscent um, to Austria, where it's a very quick track overall. Not that you get crazy overtaking. It was longer. It was a very quick track, but but uh, but it, the 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 turns are flowy or flowier. <laughs> I like to use that. It's not a real word, but it's just like it flows. So you're not. It's not heavy braking zones. So you're going into these into these turns. That's for our Dominican followers, right? El flow. El flow. El flow yeah. turn. <laughs> so you're going into these turns at high speed, but you're also carrying a lot of speed into the curbs. And if you have high curbs, they're gonna destroy your car. Obviously, you have more velocity going into them, so it's a lot like Austria. Very yeah. similar, very similar characteristics. And we thought it was going to be a Red Bull track. Well, a Red Bull ring is so. <laughs> <laughs> the song was a Verstappen and Bottas had penalties. Signs did not, even though he went to go see the stewards. We ended up getting uh, a start to the race of Hamilton and Gasly on the front on the front oh. line, which was. Must have been like a not a dream come true because it's not pole position, but like, can you imagine like your Pierre Gasly and Alfa Tari on the front row? That's nuts. Um, alongside the yeah, world alongside the third place, yeah, crazy, strange times. Um, so the race itself, let's talk Max and Lewis. Not much to talk. Uh, so Hamilton, start of the race, kind of just bounced right. Yep. See you later, suckers. Yeah, that was pretty much it. Can you believe that this was the first race that Lewis, this season, that Lewis has uh, started in front and finished in front? No. that's It's became so automatic over the last couple of years. Yeah. That it's like, I'm like what? It's he hard has to not done it once. This is the first time he's done it. It's the first time he's done it this that year. He never lost first place. I haven't lost first place. First that he's, he he that he's started dominated, on pole yeah. and led from the beginning to the end. First time this year, and we're so used to that. That's the first time he's done it this year. Jeez. Max has done it, I think, three or four times. That's an but. interesting stat, dude. Yeah. The guy was not under any threat, right? Like he caught off to a clean start, just maintained the gap throughout the whole race. They were just watching the numbers, watching the seconds, and yeah, now we're safe. We're safe, you know. A Red Bull had nothing to respond to them. They they they. Didn't even have a chance. No, I, I especially if we got out front. Maybe it would have been more interesting if, if, uh, if Max would have started out at the front going into of turn course. one. Mm-hmm. But I mean, starting against an Alfatari and an Alpine right behind you, forget about it. There were times where, I think during the first stint, Max, I don't know what, I don't remember what he said over the radio, but he was like, "I'm, I'm just gonna go get him," and he closed it from like seven seconds to like. Six seconds, but that was about as close as he could get. And then, and then they pitted, and Mercedes reacted right away uh, to the pit. And also, but the thing is that also, um, this track ate up the tires, so there's only so much you can push before your tires just go out on you, as we saw. So there was there was there's not really much that they could have done. No, Mercedes didn't take didn't take any yeah. any risks. And then obviously, you, Hamilton this weekend. you suffer more with your tires in dirty air because you're mm-hmm. you know, going back and forth. So. I don't think Max even had a chance to catch him. Even though Max did have, um, uh, starting in fifth, he did have, to get himself up to second so quick, that was pretty good. Um, he did. He had. He got off to a great start, as he always does. Yeah. Um, and then it was make, able to make a few overtakes, but then when he got up to Lewis, it just, yeah, it wasn't happening. He was like in a world of his own. Second place. So Max actually started in seventh. In seventh, not fifth. Yeah. 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 Oh, sorry. So right at the beginning, he jumped Sainz and, and Norris. And Norris, right? I away. think he was fourth by the first lap. Yep. Yeah. First lap. And he would have gone even further had he not had, had that near the- miss yeah. with uh, Fernando Alonso. But it became like it was almost academic. He was, I think, by lap four, he was already second place and just mm-hmm. just kind of controlling his race. Um, I did like Alonso at the beginning of the race being in P two. 
for a little bit after he, he overtook Gasly in the second yeah. turn or whatever, third turn. Oh, Alonso's a great starter, too. Of course. Man. I mean, that's... Like, you have to be a good starter to be a great Formula 1 driver. We know how great Fernando is. But. Is there anything to say about... Man, it's almost like like nothing happened between these two. Like The only thing is... Smooth sailing. Just Yeah, but like... Where do we stand here? Because to me, looking... Obviously, as an outsider, we're all outsiders looking in, but to me... I thought you were an insider. I am. And you lied to us? I was on on uh, the team. I was the steward, actually, that way gotcha. the flag to get Max in trouble. Dude, you need to get your lies right. Oh, my <laughs> lies right. <laughs> but the... Advice to a friend. Close to Close So to me, it looks like Mercedes and Lewis Hamilton have all of the momentum. Right now, they're going back to that Brazilian Grand Prix engine, yes. which is the newer ICE. Still the same MGUH, MGUK, etc. It's funny they didn't mention that all weekend, though. What? I, that, you know, that the engine on the, on the car was not the Brazilian. I don't engine. think they knew. Who? I think they, they said that in one of the uh, the debriefs that you uh, that, that you fall asleep. But they haven't launched that yet. That's what I'm saying. Yeah, it usually comes did. out like two no, meaning, Maybe they got it because I saw a quote from... Throughout the whole week, it, there was no mention of that, of them, them saying or yeah, clarifying. That's the thing. That I don't think anybody knew. No, yeah. Obviously, they're not going to let outside of the team, but there was no yeah. mention of, mm -hmm. hey, he's not... You know, hey, by the way, he's not using the engine from Brazil this week. This is crazy. Oh, you know what, yeah. what I'm saying? Like, yeah. they just threw it out there and they showed the pace. Yeah. What was this pace with that engine before Brazil? Right, and the Brazil engine was like... Having a rocket at on the steroids, back of it. yeah, <laughs> it was crazy. So <laughs> it's what? so yeah. This is so Jedi great. Knight, man. They're gonna how be blind. You, <laughs> how you see how these teams can use different, even strategies with their engine, because obviously the plan for for Mercedes was let us introduce a new engine, so we have another engine in the pool for the rest of the season, even though we don't have to use it all the time. But we have a new That's engine smart. in the pool. Right. So when we do need it, we have it right. there, and, you've already and we'll take the penalty at a race where we know we can overtake, which was Brazil. Yep. That. What's up? What a maneuver. <laughs> that that genius that, level. Exactly. That is the the chess. Is it this one? The applause? No. This one. This one. The, Bravo, mistakes, bro. This is Total Wolf to <laughs> FIA. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, 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 dude. This this is. <laughs> This is Mercedes, like, this is the chess game between the team, the teams and the team principals and the team strategist. If I'm, if it's me, if I'm Christian Horner, I would have taken an engine penalty yesterday. I would have taken that penalty at the race where I'm already five back. I think I can make things happen. Let me take my engine penalty. Granted, you have to have a little more planning and mm -hmm. yeah. kind of I don't think this was the right circuit because it was not this one just not. because of the tire degradation and not that you couldn't overtake but it they, showed they that you could overtake that but it's just they didn't that. know that until well granted yeah, that's the thing that they didn't know and like they didn't know but the uncertainty was there but even if they did they, like they didn't know right it probably would have still been bad because now they know that they, like there's a tire degradation so but it probably would have been the worst race to do it to be honest with you but now you're up against it you're Red Bull. You're up against it. You have two races. Mercedes has a rocket ship of an engine, mm -hmm. which has very minimal wear and tear, so they can run it at a higher. Uh, they can run it at a higher specification or a higher engine mode. Okay, so I'm gonna ask this question. Hello. I'm gonna ask each of you this question. Who wins this championship? Make your prediction now: Lewis Hamilton or Max Verstappen? Hamilton. <laughs> he woke up. I'm going to go with Hamilton. Oh, three yeah, I think all, Where I are think, you sleeping? I th yeah, I think <laughs> all of us have to, dude, based on what's been happening, we have Just to Just this pace they're showing, and we're going to a fast, yeah, super but fast track. I, listen. That, that, right. It's like this truck barely has any, like, slow corners. Let, let, forewarning. Okay, because you mentioned the word momentum earlier, right? And obviously, we've fallen into this trap already before where the momentum seemed to be going Red Bull's way. And this was happening up until Mexico, where they had a dominant win. And then all of a sudden, the pendulum swung. Okay. And we'll go back, and we go, we go to Brazil. Okay. Right? Now in Brazil, 
as Total Wolf said, and I'm 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 I think it's smart by Total Wolf using that he has awoken the lion, which is Max Verstappen's right. logo. The lion. I thought you were gonna say Total Wolf when he said thirty years ago. No. <laughs> 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 but now we like the pendulum keeps swinging, and that's the way this whole championship has gone. Oh, so, I mean, obviously, that's it. Mercedes pulled out that 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 rabbit in the hat, man, with that with just taking that engine penalty at the right time, still winning the race in Brazil, dominating. Even with all the penalties, yeah, because it was more. And then coming to this track that they don't know, which is it's a fast track. I didn't think it was going to be so fast, but it's a very fast track, and dominating the weekend, man. It sure looks like it. I think that Hamilton eventually wins the championship, but I wouldn't count out Max Verstappen yet either. It's hmm. uh, he's he's done. He's tough. This is Mercedes. This is, you know, Hamilton's. I mean, I think we'd all, well, not all, but I think that seeing Max's first championship versus Hamilton's eighth would be kind of nice, but I just, I don't, I don't know. Uh, I don't know, man. <laughs> I kind of want to see that record broken. I yep. want to, I want to, I want to say, listen, you know, when you get older and more gray hairs, I want to say, listen, I saw. I witnessed that. Being made. I saw the greatest driver ever. Okay, Jordan. Okay. Yeah. The greatest driver ever. Down in the fourth quarter. Down and out and come back like a champ and like a just lion. destroy everyone. And we've seen when Lewis Hamilton gets into these like winning streaks, he is unbeatable, bro. We've seen it. We've seen it time after year after time, year. Year second, after year. Second half of the season. Just year kaboom. They always, and, now, they always wake up. and this is gonna be another feather in his cap. You know why? Because everybody keep keeps saying Hamilton only wins because he has the best car, yep. and he's always out in front, and he never has any competition. Now he has it this year, and look how he's responding. Come on, man. Listen, I'm a Ferrari fan. My favorite driver is Charles Leclerc, but right this, now. this, you have to you have to see what Lewis Hamilton doing, and you got to appreciate that. If you're a real fan of the sport, you're going to appreciate what this guy's doing right now because he is doing amazing right now. And he is one of the greatest to ever do it. There's no doubt about that. And just the finesse that he shows while doing it too. Dude. And then just and literally just pick like he's literally taking that team and putting it on his back. Yeah, yep. boy. Yep. Okay. Yep. He's putting that team on his back. He said, "Come, follow me." I got something to do for you. So Carter comes back, 2025. Yes. Right? What? Whenever it comes back. Yeah. Are uh, we gonna get a? A boring track because this one was pretty good, even though it's the first uh, time we go. Well, we're not definitely going to be racing here. I know, yeah, it's a new track, so I hope it brings something exciting to that track. So, is that track going to be both for MotoGP and Formula One? The new one? one? Yeah. I don't know. I, I think that would make the determination, no? Why well, would they? Or, I mean, this is a pretty good track for motorcycle racing. Right? So I don't no, yeah, for motorcycle racing. Yeah. I think this is the one that opens up the year. The year, yeah. Yeah. So, I don't, I don't, I'll, why would you? I don't know. Why would I? Well, I mean, whatever. It doesn't really matter. So, as long as the racing is fun. Th this was, I mean, this wasn't, like I said, well, this wasn't the best race. I think that the tire punctures made it more interesting. But we'll get to that. Go ahead. Sergio Perez qualified 11th. Finished fourth. Uh, Valtteri Bottas qualified third. Had the penalty. Pushed him back into the, uh, into the mix. Yep. No, he only had a three place grid penalty. So he started he started sixth. Mm -hmm. He had issues. Power unit issues. He had a puncture mm -hmm. mid race to the to the tune where he had to be retired. So that's a, a second and a fourth for Red Bull and a first and a uh, DNF for Mercedes. Constructors championship is now a five point difference. Five forty six point five for Mercedes. 541.5 for Red Bull. Yeah, Red Bull got lucky. Yeah. Red Bull got lucky. I yeah. mean, Red Bull got lucky, and Bottas is probably the most unluckiest driver ever on the F1 grid in history. Jesus, uh, what is This wrong? guy at the beginning of the... I don't think, I think in the first lap, let me tell you he something. lost like six places. And no? Let me tell you something. Yeah, he lost... A, he lost at the beginning, places, on the first lap. And he was stuck. But after Total Wolf came on, came on the radio, said, 
Let's go. Let's get these guys. He was doing it. He was overtaking people. He got up to third. Yep. He was in he was in line to get a podium. Pobre Alonso was not gonna get his podium. Yeah. Um, but he was in line to get the podium. It's just he got the puncture. Then oh. the F1 gods so, give him a punch. Yeah, no, but I mean, he didn't drive. I mean, he wasn't his best drive, but he didn't drive bad this weekend at all. No, he was he was overcoming the you know mm-hmm. the mishaps at the beginning of it. Yeah, but then you know he was doing what he has what he was supposed to do, and it's just it just sucks that he got that puncture. I think that was really uh, if he was on another team, if he was on Red Bull, we'd be saying that he's cursed like that second seat on Red Bull, right? <laughs> yeah, this guy has been cursed. So yeah, for real, it's now a five point difference, and it. We can safely assume, right? It's going to be one, two, Max and Hamilton, right? The next two. The next two. Yeah. Right? If nothing crazy happens. If nothing. Oh, my God. If, if that's You sent the, us the scenarios. Yeah. We'll talk uh, about yeah. that later. Yeah, but yeah. Um, Max can win it if something crazy happens to Lewis Hamilton, I should say. Yes. So, man, it's really up to Sergio Perez and Valtteri Bottas to determine this Constructors Championship and yes. the money that they're going to make at the end of the year. Uh, nope, no pressure, guys. As we said, we said this earlier, all of us, we, that was a consensus. It was going to come down to and the, fastest the second drivers. Yeah. yeah. And the fastest laps. <laughs> yeah. And the fastest laps. So, and how, <laughs> how critical now, as close as these championships are, and how I remember how people were criticizing why do we have the fastest lap point? Doesn't make any sense. Hmm. Oh, excuse now. me. Why do we have the sprint races? Doesn't make any sense. Oh, okay, right. So you know these these point. Every single point is valuable, and all of this stuff. As you look, if we w- once the the season's over and every, you know everybody gets their awards, we'll look back at how the season played out, and we can see exactly the point where the points were gained and when they were lost, and you can see that every point counts, and all of this stuff is entertaining for us to see, to watch. Uh, you know, it, it makes everything more interesting. How important was it that Bodas won those two sprint qualifyings for over Verstappen, dude? And taking points away in for fast yep. laps, even though he yep. didn't get the point. So, as much as we, he's not had much luck on Sunday, mm-hmm. but Saturdays he's been no, he's solid. He, I, he's he's a better solid. solid. Yeah, he's a he's a better uh, qualifier. You know what's crazy is that th- th- it's like two polar opposites, right? Because you have Checo Perez, who's not very good at qualifying, but he's great with his racecraft, and he's better on Sunday. The opposite goes for Mercedes with Bottas. Bottas is great at qualifying. He's super quick, but when it comes to his racecraft, it's a little bit iffy. So, I mean, that that's the dynamic there. His stars are horrible. <laughs> Yeah. He's always sleeping on the <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. the beginning. That's, that's a major problem. Uh, I mean, listen, at the end of the day, it's inconsistencies, and the most consistent drivers are the ones that are going to, you know, are the creme de la creme, the one that ties mm-hmm. to the top, that go to the top, which is, which is, that's the difference between him and Lewis. And, you know, Valtteri is not a Lewis Hamilton type of driver, and uh, but he's still a solid driver. But the reason why he's not to Lewis Hamilton's caliber is because he can be very inconsistent sometimes and we've seen that throughout his career it's the name of the game yeah um so Paris did well though Paris did really well mm-hmm. uh, I, I forgot I think it was Brundle that said it on uh, during the race he was like he said that Paris must feel like there's 30 cars out there because he's overtaken so many cars <laughs> yo he did though it, it was yeah, like true. It was rid- if he's not leading the crypto.com thing I don't know who is. He's not. He's not. Alonso is. Alonso. <laughs> okay, that's that's a good one because he always does, starts so well. But he kept setting up, and it, it was it was lovely to see him. Simply lovely, as Max would say. Um, he would set up, turn one. He would take the outside to then be able to get the inside on turn two. He did that consistently, lap after lap, setting up. You know all his overtakes, and it was just like, damn, isn't somebody gonna figure out that? Hey, this rope is dope. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. But the whole time it was the outside to the inside, and then all of a sudden he got him. He did that also with uh, Alonso mm-hmm. during their battle, which was awesome. Yeah. Um, uh, if it know. wasn't for the virtual safety car, Perez would have Perez, Perez would have got him. Perez would have definitely got him. Anything else to say about these two? I don't think he would have definitely got him. I think there was gonna be some tires. 
So Dude, he was on. So but he, but he on was Alonso's on fresher side. Tires. So Perez yeah. was on much fresher tires. Alonso was doing a one stop. I think there. it w- it would have been one of those things where it, m- it would have been like one of the final laps. Mm-hmm. Uh, but Alonso's a good defender too. No, Alonso. I think Norris said that in the. So one thing is catching up. The other thing is passing. So. I think uh, Norris said that about Alonso. Like, I don't think it was. I don't think it would have been clear cut that he would have caught him, but it would have been close. One of the hardest guys to over <laughs> to overtake is. Uh, Alonso. Even when he's like not even fighting for a podium, yeah. he's just like just not letting it well, the, hold the uh, door, right? I think his best highlight this year so far has been when he defended against Hamilton, uh, Hamilton. In well, Ocon. to allow yeah. for Ocon to so what, get so the podium what, yeah, or to win the to race. To win the race, yeah. So, uh, man. so uh, and we've seen that between those two in Mexico before when he was with McLaren. Yeah, Ocon did an awesome job defending too. We'll get to that. <laughs> we'll get to that. So, all right. So we could he jump did right. Do a good job. We, we can also <laughs> jump. Right into yeah. that. Um, Alonso. Fernando Alonso, first podium since Great 2014. Segment. He was still with Ferrari back then. Still with Ferrari. I think it was in Hungary, too, actually. Um, Alonso says his uh, his first podium in 2014 here, or since 2014, shows he's moved to another level compared to the start of his F1 uh, Formula 1 comeback. He also said that, I don't know if he's joking or not, that he's ready to uh, fight Hamilton and Verstappen for the title in 2022. Uh, <laughs> I don't know if that's like, are you being for real? Uh, it's a possibility, I guess. If, if, you get the rules, if, if, if you he get gets the, the rules, equipment right. underneath him, I wouldn't doubt it. If they get the rules right. Remember, we're switching the rules. Dude, a championship win for Alonso in 2022 as an over-40 driver would be bananas. It'd be what Nick Lauda did, didn't he? I don't know if he did over-40. But I know he retired. He, he, came, he retired and came back in one. Yeah, I'll, I'll look it up now. So, but it's only been three drivers. I think that over forty were podium. That's crazy. So your man did good qualifying. Got the benefit of having a couple of guys have the grid place penalties. Mm-hmm. Raced his balls off, right? One stop penalty versus Perez's two stop versus many other drivers' two stops that were probably in better. Or more competitive cars for the weekend, um, held off, or ha- was was helped by Esteban Ocon defending like a lion, essentially. <laughs> <laughs> well, we m- in, in the race you might s- want to say that, but the memes are saying otherwise. <laughs> 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 so, if you have a chance to look at the memes, the memes say <laughs> s- strongly show something different. Uh, did he, I mean, he had a small battle with Paris. Very small. But Very small. The guy's tires. But it happened to where Yancey said, he, you know, where Paris was on the inside of one turn, he led it to, you know, to the outside of one turn, then he led to the inside of the other turn, but he was backwards with, with Ocon, but Ocon just couldn't stop him. Ocon had done a pit stop for Hards on lap 24. Yes. He was nursing them. Uh, yeah, on, I on mean. On lap 41 is when Paris pitted for, granted, they were used mediums, but mm-hmm. the, the use is the qualifying session. So yeah. it's like. It's two lap old. Two laps. Yeah. So. No, I mean uh, he did what he can, do, he, what he could do. Obviously, the Red Bull was a faster car. Um, it 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 it'd be tough to defending, especially if you don't have the tires, and you have to worry about your tires too because everyone was getting punctures. Okay, so so Ocon should look at a couple of but some footage of Alonso, the way Alonso defending, so he could learn. I got you, but listen, like a lion. One thing is, one thing fine he he couldn't keep him behind him but what one thing that he did do was one he did uh, make him use his tires fighting him a little bit but also once he did overtake him he went after him and tried to overtake overtake take it back yeah. take it back and then that you still you know, you're still wasting time fighting another car mm-hmm. maybe Seco Perez and you're still using up your tires and we know that tire degradation is very key so he didn't do as much as one would like, but he did enough, uh, especially with the VSC. I think he did enough to at least um, help his teammate get that podium. I'm not going to give him a hat, okay? Uh, no, just in case, because the Alpine hat. And by the way, Nicky Lotto was 35. 35, yeah. Yeah, when he won it. Dude. So what do we say here? So with this podium, with the uh, Esteban Ocon fifth place, and with Pierre Gasly, just poop in the bed. It pushes Alpine up by 25 points, 137 to 112. What a disappointing weekend for Alpha. Team. They were tied 
coming into this weekend. Yeah. And at the beginning, of, at the beginning of the race, what was or a twenty-five a point swing. Twenty-five points, uh, a first place essentially. That's insane. Durnford. That's a big difference, especially when you're going in only into two, into like the last two races. Um, and I think that the Alpha Tori has a faster car. Yeah, they looked great. Well, they Gasly look great looked great all weekend. Qualifying. All so weekend. Not a yeah, so was no, Sonoda or like throughout the practice session, they had a great weekend overall up until Sunday, and and it wasn't. And I thought it was. Uh, at first, I thought it was maybe uh, something wrong. Obviously, uh, the, the big story of this race was the tires, but they just uh, uh, Gasly admitted after the race they just didn't have any pace. Like they just couldn't pass anybody. It wasn't. It wasn't so much that the tires were hampering them. It's like they just clearly just didn't. They have qualified. It. Gassi and it wasn't that they couldn't overtake Michael. because obviously we saw that overtaking was a lot better than expected here. So it was Maybe just it was the arrow on the car. Uh, I don't know. It's Maybe. hard to really. Gasly I mean, on the because remember when Gasly also got that puncture at the end of qualifying. So maybe that you know they they um maybe they they didn't pick up some damage that that tire had done. We know that it delaminated and it was flapping around, um. Which is a very different puncture than what the other cars were having during the race. They also went two stop. Gasly w- pitted on thirteen and on thirty five, yeah. and he pitted onto used tires. Onto so used mediums. Yep. Yeah. So there was a there's a there's a lot of things, but they just thought, they don't know exactly what happened. But they didn't have the pace, and it was both cars. It just wasn't Gasly. I know what happened. They officially lost lost fifth place. Okay. That because that's, that's after. Thank you. <laughs> Because they're not going to make up 25 points. It's a very astute observation. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Not stupid? A stupid. A stupid. No, like, Alpha Tower is not going to make up 25 points in the next two races. Because it's only Gasly scoring points. Uh, and that's... Gasly doesn't four fifth six, four five six, four five six. So, so going back to Alonso to wrap that up, unbelievable drive. This guy has been a monster driver. I had a tear. He was I loving the car. The, his that car was, they were one with the car. <laughs> <laughs> I wasn't crying. You guys were crying. Yeah, yeah. I wasn't crying. Yeah. Good. Nah, but it was it was so good but to I got see him. I, I, I can finally say that I got to see Alonso on a podium, which uh, I haven't seen. I, I, as you guys know, I'm a big fan of Fernando Alonso. I think anywhere he goes, he's you know he's he drives and he gets the best out of any car, whether it be in WAC or in Doha or whatever. whatever. He's a driver. He's a driver. He's you put a, him on anything, he drives. Yeah. It. When anything, he, you, he understands that he's a driver. And for him to actually come back to a team that's in the midfield and get a podium, not only not only that, but obviously help his team, help his teammate get a win, got himself a podium. Um, the tire saving that he did during this race was amazing yeah. because obviously we saw that the tires were heavily degrading. Um, he just did an uh, he did an awesome job, man. And and obviously, the only thing b- better for him would be a win, but we know that's not gonna happen. But he got his podium, man, and that's awesome. That's good to hear. And hopefully, maybe they get it right. Maybe they do can fight for the championship next season. You never know. And I mean, it's a long shot, but you never know. My tin for hat. Moment of the race was virtual safety car save him, and they threw the virtual safety car because of the tires. Yancy says it because because of the TV, but I say because of the tires. Uh, Wellington, could you knock some sense into it? <laughs> I, I would love to. <laughs> I would love to. Yeah, they uh, all of a sudden they stopped the race. So it's gonna be let, l- Come on, bro. Where did they do it? The vi- no, the no, virtual safety car, so I, the I, marshals could get onto the racetrack and clear. Okay. Uh, who was it? It was, it was a debris Lat- from uh, either Russell or Latifi. Ruff- no, no Latifi's the, the, the car. Latifi's car was the Latifi's yeah. car because he retired him. Okay. And you're saying that they threw it because what is your problem, bro? Okay. He just wants Latifi to get hurt. No, no, he because, because they, the car was there for like almost three to laps. save Alonso's yeah. podium. The car oh, was there already. You're right. You're right. You're right, Ruben. No, it wasn't for to save Alonso's podium. I never, I never going to say that. Said. No, I said that the virtual safety car save Alonso the podium. But if they didn't do it, so he could have the you know. So then, what the is podium. your point? Because he helped them, you know, solidify his podium position. But th- the safety car didn't throw it to help Alonso. Come on, they're not going to do it. It's not. Not, it's not that clear like that, Yancy. No, no, they, yeah, they, that's the they threw it. No, no. They, that's we're it. sitting at the same table here, and two of us heard nah, that. I, I said that going because they were trying to prevent more blowouts. That's why they put the, the, safety, oh. the virtual safety card. Okay. Speaking of blowouts, 
They were also Let's like move on. anybody else get. Yeah, yeah, I'm going because that's so, still that's still a no. So but Pirelli, <laughs> there were too many cars already doing one stoppers. Jesus, that there was not it was not yeah. recommended so, over a weekend. Uh, Pirelli, see? do you believe in aliens? Hell no. <laughs> Yeah, right. <laughs> everything. I believe in everything. Don't you watch Instagram videos of a guy flying in? Skiing it. Um. <laughs> wow. Wow. <laughs> he just like go. Yeah, the waffle. What is it at the end? The waffle. Waff, waffle. Oh, anyway. Listen, let me come on. Pirelli. Let's focus. Focus. <laughs> what? Just like, uh, just like after Baku. Oh, no, yeah, I mean. <laughs> just like after Baku, Pirelli is going to be investigating what the heck happened with these tire failures. Not much more to say, right? It's just, it becomes a matter of safety, right? We had the Bottas mm-hmm. uh, puncture. We had uh, Norris had issues. We, we had uh, George Russell had issues. We had a lot of uh, drivers obviously experience uh, issues with their tires. Vibrations. Right, vibrations. And they said they had no warning. Correct. Yes. And, and it sounds very familiar, right, to Baku, where the, the tire blew out under Max. Well, you, What's her name, Baku? It's very easy to blame Pirelli. Yeah. It's very easy to blame Pirelli, but Pirelli did say before the race, one stop is the one stop is you have to do some serious tire management to get a one stop race done. Was the Baku at the end that threw a sa- the virtual safety car? And they think- threw a safety car at the end. Yeah, but it was to prevent more blowouts. Yeah, and the, well, they had the, they stopped the race. They did a red flag. Everybody changed their tires because they didn't want this to continue. Mm-hmm. Remember, Red Bull came over the radio. Yo, this is kind of messed up, and then. Uh, from there, Perez was able to win the race, etc. Uh, but here, it's another situation in which... <laughs> it, listen, some teams wanted to be aggressive with their tire strategy. Uh, Pirelli did warn them that it, that it was going to be high tire degradation. And we all know that because obviously the track hasn't been repaved in quite a long time. Is so it open? Yeah, so I mean, I don't know since I, I can't give you an exact uh, like date, but it's quite a long time. How could you not give us a date, dude? Come on. Sorry. Um, not sorry. Um, <laughs> but Pirelli did warn them that it was going to be a two stopper. People obviously tried it because obviously it saves them 20. I think the average uh, time loss in the pit is 24 seconds. So if you can pit just once you're going to gain 24 seconds off your final yep. time which is a big advantage um it worked obviously for alonzo uh he got him the podium but it was very nip and tuck and a lot of people got blowouts so um obviously it's a new track so they don't have a full understanding of how the tires are going to react you got to you know throw that into into the mm-hmm. uh, throw that into play um but obviously, I think Pirelli is going to investigate and see what what what, what went wrong. Um, it's high tire degradation. The bumps are brutal. If they can destroy an, destroy an entire chassis, if you have a, a tire that's already degraded and hits that bump, it's going to just blow up. Um, so it could be a combination of things. But I think Pirelli will get on top of it. They've been pretty good with that overall. Hopefully these things are... Yeah, resolve. But it is very dangerous, yeah, right? especially if you get no warning. Yeah, the gentleman from from Pirelli that was at the track, I forgot his name. He said that those tires that blew out, they were being flown to Milan. I believe that's where their base is at. Mm-hmm. They were going to be investigated oh. this week. Oh, okay, make sure you stay uh, stay abreast uh, with your sources over there in Milan. <laughs> I'm about to fly over. Yeah. <laughs> we all should. If you guys need some testing of that tire. <laughs> um, when it doesn't stop it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> when it doesn't actually really punch it. Yeah. <laughs> Me and Eddie will go over there. Yep. Uh, best of the rest, or the rest of the worst, or whatever you want to call it. McLaren versus Ferrari. That fight for third place, it's over. Yeah? 47 to 4. Jeez. 47 to 4, what? The last three races. Points. Ferrari has outscored McLaren. 47 to 4. In the last one race? How many? Three races. Three races. Now they have a 40-point lead. Jeez. 47 to 4. So R- Daniel Ricciardo had a compromised Qatari Grand Prix. He had, uh, he, he even said on the post-race that, like, the moment, like, the race started, he, he, he started, started getting, getting warnings <laughs> warnings about the, the, the fuel, that he wouldn't be able to make it to the end. And he was like, he said it, like. It didn't even make sense. He thought it was just an error within the uh, steering wheel mm-hmm. that, that gave him that code. 
But no, they came over the radio and said, no, you need to start saving fuel. He said that it it sh- it lowered his speed up to two seconds per oh, lap. Damn. Can't compete. And that's... uh. Yeah, and Ferrari didn't have the best weekends either. Yeah. No. Like, they were dominant last weekend in Brazil, but this weekend they weren't, like... It wasn't anything special, to right. be honest with you. They Lando finished, Norris. What did they finish, 7th and 8th? So, I'll, I'll look it up, but... Lando Norris had a... Um, he was competitive, but then that, that puncture, that blowout, just kind of tanked the race for him. Um, I don't know. I, I just don't see... Ferrari's pace has been so good over the last couple of races versus... He's the upgrade. Exactly. Versus where McLaren is that... Let's go, baby. Yeah. Let's I, go, I, baby. I just don't see Ferrari giving up that third place, that especially 40 uh, At this point, 40 point is a 40-point swing. Okay. Yeah, no. 47 to 4. Uh, With the way... The, the last three races, they've taken control of that third place. Um, something drastic has to happen if, if they're going to... if they're. Uh, if, if if McLaren is going to jump back into that race, so I think uh, to just listen, forty points. Yeah, seventh and eighth for Sainz and Leclerc. If you would have told me last season or before the end of the season that uh, that uh, at the beginning, let's uh, say the yeah, the beginning of the season that Ferrari was going to cement third place, I'd be like, yo, uh, it's possible, but not nah, really, and uh, it sure has, man. So it's been uh, great for the Tifosi. Yeah, one thing to, that's interesting to watch. Um, Carlos Sainz being Carlos Sainz, mm-hmm. just the man, smooth operator. Um, he's down to Charles Leclerc, 152 to 145.5. So that's a six and a half point difference going into the last two races. I'm sure he would love to beat his teammate uh, walking away from this, uh, uh, I guess, season. Mm-hmm. Any thoughts on that intra- intra-team battle? Yes. It's been good. I mean, uh, Sainz is driving definitely better, has driven better, I think, than Leclerc. Uh, the last two races. In the last two races, um, yeah, they finished seventh and eighth. Um, I don't think that signs will beat Leclerc, but it's a good uh, listen. It's good. They're that close. Th- th- it's good that they're close because that means that they're maximizing their points, and that I don't mind. Um, either way, uh, you need two drivers on the same page in order for you to move up the grid. They are. And they de- they definitely are. Um, and you can see that that team is working really well. And all the upgrades have worked. Um, they get on well. Yeah. They and um, anytime they've had team order team orders, they have, um, you know, they've worked really well and everybody's obeying the, you know, the team orders and the doing what thing. they got, the, doing what they have to do. So, um, but yeah, Leclerc is gonna beat Sainz, even though it's very close. I think just by them being so close, it's already obviously you want to actually win on points. But by them being so close, to me, it's already a win for Sainz. Yeah, I agree. Because Sainz is a new team. team. Yeah. Obviously, he he put in the work and he put in the time to be at, at you know where he is with the team. Mm-hmm. But it's, it's still it's still up it's still up for grabs, in my opinion. Especially with the last two races that Sainz has, you know. He just come from in the next two races. He still could, he could grab against him. He could. I mean, but... The, uh, but when's the last time you see Charles Leclerc but batch a race or, you know, throw a race? The, the, it's, t- it's tough to see that, too. It, it's it's tough to get over that. Why? Because even if, let's say, um, Sainz does... Um, Sainz does beat Leclerc in the next two races, mm-hmm. most of the time they're finishing together. That's what I'm so saying. It's not going to be by a ton of points. point differential... It's not going to be big. Right now, it's what? Four uh, points. Four points. So, yeah, I c- they could swing either way. Either way, yeah. But, um, but it, it, Leclerc is a faster driver at this point. And I think Leclerc... Um, not by much, though. But he's faster. Not by much. Yeah, it doesn't matter. Show my man, some, show my man Chili some no, love, too. No, I show him all the love Dude, This whole world. time, you still haven't hit the drop. Oh, for the smooth operator? <laughs> I'm going to take those responsibilities away from me. Um, the... Yeah, but... Leclerc is clearly quicker than Sainz, but uh, again, moving into a new team, uh, he's done a great job. So. Clearly. So, AlphaTauri botched it, right? We already talked about it. Like, uh, they just didn't have the pace. Poor Pierre Gasly. We talked about Fernando Alonso, but how about Esteban Ocon? One stop strategy finishes fifth, scores a lot of points for the team combined with Alonso. Is he much improved? 
Yeah. Or was it just a lucky day? No, man. But he did have a race win as well this year. How so. can you call how can you call Ocon just a lucky dude when just look at his career. He's he's a proven point scorer. Um obviously he, last season he I think it was his first season he st- he had to still get his, you know, his legs under him or his wheels under him. But um he's had a race win this year. S- he scored a ton of points for his team. Um, driving alongside Fernando Alonso, which is not easy. Ask any of <laughs> Alonso's past teammates how he can destroy them, especially Stoffel Van Dorn. Um, I think that's what's yeah, helped man, out. I, he's, hold, he's held his own. He's held his own. And again, he he's a good second driver, <laughs> you know, but he's a proven point scorer. Can he be world championship material? I don't know, but he's a, again, as long as you score points, you'll be fine. And if you take advantage of the opportunities that are given to you, just like he took advantage earlier in the year and got his first uh, race win, and he's had podiums, um, he's not lucky, man. The guy, I think he's, he he's, a, he's a pretty good driver and fast, too, for the yeah. car that he has. Yeah. Even when, when you go back to the Force India days, remember, he was neck-to-neck with, with Paris. Paris all the time. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Yeah, exactly. and they were bumping and grinding to each and other. There were times where he was better. Yeah, mm-hmm. and he um, was he was showing that that he could be better than Paris in other times. Yeah, and I think that if if that battle would have kept playing out, I think over uh, eventually Ocon would have come out on top. He would have come out on top over Paris. Yeah. So the other kind of last team I wanted to mention, last two drivers I wanted to mention, one stop strategy, Lance Stroll, and Sebastian Vettel. Lance Stroll ended up finishing this race in sixth place. Sebastian Vettel in tenth. Nice job, Aston Martin. Um, looking to finish strong this season and carry some momentum into next year, but better luck next time, right? Yeah, I mean, quite nondescript race, but but they got points. They got points, and that's yeah. all. But you know, that's what matters. Yeah, and then you know, good for Lance. He finished sixth. So yeah, which is pretty I high for that because usually they're fighting most of the time. Those the Aston Martins are fighting to like you know for that bottom like you know nine eight nine ten. You know what's crazy is they're they're I feel like they're always in the uh, Vettel and Stroll. I feel like they're always in the mix like in the midfield battle. But then like for some reason at the end of the races they, they just bottom. something happens. Yeah, yeah like the, the team is not consistent. You always see them on camera like in the mix. But uh, I don't consistency. Know. I don't get it because maybe even from the co- from even from the from the equipment that they have. Yeah. We know that team is good. Yeah. But yeah. yeah. Guys, anything else to mention for this race? Anything we missed? I think we covered. I think we covered a lot. Yeah, man, it's just that the championship fight. Oh boy, this championship fight is down what eight points. It. Um, yep. Yeah, eight points. It is down to eight points. Eight points. Thank God that Max got that fastest lap. After Mexico, we didn't think that it would be this close coming into the race. Yeah. Um, After Mexico, I thought they were going to just run away with it. Yeah, well, and but now it's looking like Mercedes is going to run away with it. <laughs> <laughs> it's slingshot by, so by we, them. Listen, we got two races left. Jeez. Yo, so uh, we have a, a, a brand new track coming up that we've never seen, so that's going to be fun to watch and see how fast those cars. If we love Baku, this is a very similar track, but probably faster than Baku, I think. Less 90s, more. Yeah, less 90s, less... And tighter. Yeah. Um, it looks tight, but we'll see how it actually looks, you know, when they're when they're racing. And we have a reprofiled Abu Dhabi. They changed the turn. The they did change the turn. The track, right. So it's not going to be, uh, uh, you know, as slow and boring as it is. And if, uh, which it looks like if the title fight goes into that last race, Abu Dhabi finally can be might an mean interesting something. race. It might mean something. Finally, 2016. Yeah. So, um, yeah, team. man, this has been, uh, this was supposed to be a throwaway season. This has been a dream season for a lot of F1 fans, and we're excited. I'm excited. Dream season for Netflix, too. Yeah. Yeah? Yeah. Well, I can't wait Dude. to see the new season on the, the Christian <laughs> Horner Total <laughs> Wolf battle. They, seem like they the really line. don't because like each they other. They always bro. Paint, Christian, paint Christian Horner as the troll. This is like the <laughs> perfect year for it. Yep. It's going to be amazing. I cannot it's gonna wait. Be awesome, bro. <laughs> so, guys, on that note, Total we, Wolf and Christian Horner is going to be the new uh, Lando Norris and 
Daniel, what is it? They put Lando Norris against Carlos Sainz. The two best friends? The two best friends. Oh, yeah. <laughs> they, pay, they painted them as bitter rivals. <laughs> now we finally got two rivals. Watch them paint them as friends. This is going to be great. I, I can't wait for Drive to Survive. They should just throw it out like right at the end of the season. Nah, February. Nah, why you want to wait for me? The build up for the following season. Nah, F that. Oh, you're throwing F bombs now too, huh? Uh, I didn't just throw like an F bomb. Oh, my bad. <laughs> the F bomb for Alonso was yep. Fernando. That's the F bomb. <laughs> 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 Guys, make sure to follow us. We're on many podcast platforms Apple Podcasts, Spotify, Google Podcasts, iHeartRadio, TuneIn, and Stitcher. We are on video on YouTube. Hi, right, guys. Jump to Start Racing Podcast. Uh, please make sure to follow us um, at Jump to Start F1 on Instagram and Twitter. 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 I got to make sure to say it with some T-W-I-T-T-A-H. spice. W I T T A H. And uh, on that note, Twitter. Guys, we'll see you next week for a preview of Jeddah. Saudi Arabia. Jeddah Nights. Jeddah Nights. Take care, guys. Take care.